So what we're going to do this week is continue to use JavaScript. Uh, one of the last things that we did last time was we had our intro to JavaScript. Here's JavaScript. Here's, a, here's variables. Here's making an alert happen. And then we did uh, geolocation. Remember, we looked up on uh, w3schools.com, how does geolocation work? And then we made something very simple happen. So what I've got in the network folder is uh, September 19th, which is just the file we ended up with last time, that JavaScript practice. Um, I'm not going to continue working with that project. It was just a, a simple proof of concept, but just to remind you what we did, remember we had this, uh, this stuff where a login prompt appears, we could change our background color via JavaScript, and then we had GPS share location and then it'll take a moment to hone in on you perhaps and then show you a latitude and longitude. So that's the extent of what we did last time and all of that was via JavaScript. So last week's work is there, 42 lines of code, and uh, that's what we ended up with last time. What we're going to do today is, well, we're going to get back into the project, the SDCE project that we've started with or that we've been working with and to it we're going to apply um, uh, JavaScript and um, the geolocation function. So remember uh, our example project vmcompost.com slash sdce the, the functionality of this is once you go to the info uh, screen and then directions gives you a new screen allow it'll ask for it'll ask for location and I noticed this for a few people that when you were working on on the GPS feature from last time if you were trying to test it in in Chrome it wouldn't let you um, access GPS and most likely that's because of sandboxing features in Chrome that it's realizing this is trying to connect to the internet. This web page is trying to load some resource on the internet. Let's block it. So Chrome, unless you go into the settings, you'll be able to get past that. But um, here, that exact code that we're going to work with is online, and therefore it, it asks me, would you like to access GPS? So if you were having trouble that your GPS wasn't working last time, it might have been that you were using Chrome, which is kind of being too much of a, of a nanny to you and not letting you do what you want. Uh, under Firefox, we seem to be fine. So my example, uh, we're going to get a map. This is a, this is a map that is actually dynamic. We can zoom in and all of that stuff. Get directions, and it'll give us directions to any location we choose. At its core, this example takes various things that we've already done and more things. And the way we're going to use this, or the way we're going to set this up is um, we can go you know, line by line to create the whole functionality of, of, the, of the map feature, but we're going to continue to follow the practice about having a starting point so that we don't have to do it all from scratch. We can just edit it as we want. Uh, and so what I'm going to do then is provide you in the network folder. You want to go to the network folder and copy this file, dir.html, to your... Uh, copy that to your desktop and we will work with it in a moment. If anyone needs the file that you don't have access to my network folder, let me put it on a flash drive and you can copy it from there. Does anyone need the, the file? Okay. It's in the folder called AAAA. -A -A -A. 
question. It's uh, it's similar. This 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 version I'm giving you has been updated, so the one on the website uh, will work. But this is a little more modern version. So if anyone needs that, uh, just pass that flash drive around, and, and there'll be a folder in there called AAAA, and my DIR file is in there. So everyone should get a copy of this DIR file. And um, I'm going to copy uh, September 16th. September 16th is the last time we worked on the actual web app. So if you need a copy of my file, my project, it's back on September 16th. So I'm going to copy September 16th over to my desktop and name it September 27th, uh, 23rd. And then this DIR file, copy it from the network drive into the mobile website folder of your project. <laughs> yes, so you'll want September 16th if you're going to use my file. And then once you copy that, you're going to copy the DIR file into the September 16th folder. Or if you call it September 23rd, your current folder. <clears throat> Anyone need a little help? We need the DIR folder in the, in the project folder. Are there any uh, laptop people that need the file? Raise your hand. All right, so as soon as you're done with the file, please copy it over. It's in the folder called AAA. Pass that along, please. Okay, so if you have the DIR file in your project folder, uh, go ahead and edit it with Notepad. So most of what's in that file we've, uh, we've seen before except for the JavaScript. Uh, that is, it's got JavaScript stuff, um, but new, uh, new things. Thank you. Does anyone else need the, uh, the DIR file? Question? Yeah, I'm giving this to you. Oh. So, the DIR file, yes, you can, um, you can open it in Notepad, and let's see what we've got here. So, the stuff at the top should be familiar. Uh, we've got that uh, the car set, or the char set, the character set, the viewport, Apple Mobile. This stuff is basically uh, Kodika boi boilerplate. It's... Um, it's what we get, remember, when we're using Kodika to create a jQuery mobile project. And then, okay, title, style sheet, there's a link to the jQuery CSS file, that's fine. Uh, jQuery mobile, jQuery, that's fine. And then we've got a little section here, line uh, 15, that says uh, it's another JavaScript. It's another JavaScript uh, reference here, line 15. It's over to an online resource, as we've been seeing. And this is going specifically over to Maps, 
www.google.com to their API. Um, so we are connecting to a JavaScript resource straight from Google that allows us to tap into their, their Google Maps uh, website. Uh, there's a section then on line 16 that some more JavaScript starts and it goes all the way down to line 101. So it's uh, 90 lines of code. We'll, I'll go into detail what these things do in a moment. So past that script section, we then finish the, the head section, line 103, and then the actual body starts. And then the rest here should be familiar as well. Here's some divs, data role page, an ID, data role header. This is all familiar. Data role content. I don't see any data role footer. We can add one if we want. Data role content. Line 110, there's another div. This one says class. UI bar A, UI corners all, UI shadow. Hmm, I wonder what that looks like. We'll see it in a moment. We've got a little built-in style, some padding, 1.5 M's, and then inside of that says something div ID map canvas style with a with a height. So in short, we'll see it visually in a moment. This is our placeholder that will display the map. We'll see how exactly very soon, but this is a placeholder for our map, and it's got a default height, 350 pixels. So if we want to see a larger map, we'll be able to edit that. Uh, then we've got a div of field, of data rolled field contain. We haven't seen that before. Something that says label and something that says input. We haven't seen that before. Basically, this is an input box. This is a, um, when you fill out a form, you're filling out input boxes. If it's asking um, uh, name, birthday, and you type something in, that's an input box. Sort of like when we had that prompt up here, when we used JavaScript to make a prompt up here and it asked for your name, that was a kind of an input box. So here we've got an input that is accepting some sort of text. Uh, with some things about an ID and such. There's something that says value. Okay, make a note to revisit line 115 a little bit later under value. And then at the end of lines 114 and 115, we've got something that says style display none. Uh, we touched on that briefly previously in JavaScript. Uh, style, of course, means CSS. So we've got some CSS here. CSS can affect background color, text size, pretty much every aspect of things. Another thing that it can affect is, will this element display on screen or not? So if we, select, if we type display and then the value none, that element will actually be removed from the screen. It exists, but it's not visible, it's not interactive. So there's two things that are hidden on screen. past that field contain data role. There's a good old uh, href and a tag. There's a link here, something that says get directions. Data icon bullets. OK, I'm familiar with that. It's going to add bullet, a uh, little icon of bullet points, data inline true. Uh, the inline true means it's not going to expand all the way. We've seen that. Data role button, we've seen that. Uh, it's got a unique ID, directions button. Now, we haven't seen this before, really. href equals pound. We've had href equals a, a web address, for example, HTTP, whatever. So it was going to a website. And we've seen href equals pound about. And that goes over to the about screen. But when we have simply the pound symbol, that's a, a dummy link. It doesn't go anywhere, but it behaves like a link or like a button. So sometimes we do this where we want something to behave like a link, like an active link, like a button, but it doesn't go anywhere. It still does something, which we'll see what in a moment, but it doesn't go anywhere. So simply adding the pound sign creates that dummy link. 
you've got a div that says ID results. So you, you should start to see now, we've used ID several times. And usually we've used it in conjunction with data role. We've given a page a unique ID so that we can link to it. But ID is not unique to jQuery Mobile. ID is, is something that's been around longer than jQuery Mobile since uh, at least the advent of CSS in 1998 uh, or so. So IDs are just a way to, um, uh, a couple of purposes. One is to identify something so that we can uh, work with it in JavaScript oftentimes, or to style it in CSS. So we'll see what this means a little later. Style display none. Again, something is here, something is created, but it's invisible. Display none means makes it invisible. And then another div with another ID, directions. And if you're a bit of an advanced student, I recommend you follow that link there. I put a little comment. This template comes from this great website, if you haven't heard of stackoverflow.com. It's this website where you can go to look up uh, to, to look up questions and answers on a variety of programming topics. Um, quick digression here. I'm going to go to the web browser, and if you'd like, you can check out stackoverflow.com. How many of you have never heard of stackoverflow.com? All right, a few of you. So if you have not heard of it, it's basically Stack Overflow is a question and answer site for professionals and enthusiast programmers. It's 100% free. No registration required. So I check out Stack Overflow all the time when I've got questions on programming. If I have the question, probably someone else had the question, and most likely someone else had the answer. So this is a very popular site in the world of um, programming. Uh, so just seeing here on this front screen, there, these are people asking questions, and then if there's answers, it's there. So this is a, basically all programming languages. If you've got questions on PHP, JavaScript, uh, HTML, etc. Everything. <coughs> so Stack Overflow. I recommend it. If you hadn't heard of it, go there, browse it. And it's part of the larger Stack Exchange Network. <coughs> Stack Exchange Network of sites where um, if you go to stackexchange.com Stack Overflow is part of Stack Exchange, and Stack Exchange is, again, a question and answer site. All, if I look at all sites, uh, this is all about, well, depending on the size of this, how many questions and answers are here. If I want to learn about programming, I go to Stack Overflow. If I want to learn about Ubuntu, Linux, I go there. If I want to learn about English language and usage, question and answers there. If I want to learn about arcade games, I guess, video games, I go there. Uh, mathematics. Science fiction. You can learn everything you want about Doctor Who there. Physics, mathematics, workplace, Salesforce. So, home improvement. How to fix finally that squeaky door. So, Stack Exchange is the parent site for all of these stacks, and you can go in and learn just about everything by a question and answers. And I bring this up because this uh, template that I'm providing you comes from there. I was looking for, um, a couple of years ago when I was setting up the class, I was looking for um, what's an accessible, easily taught solution to uh, displaying uh, live map coordinates in jQuery Mobile. So I searched some of those terms, I got to Stack Exchange, and eventually I found the answer to clean example of directions with Google Maps in jQuery Mobile. So that's a link to the original article. And as I said, if you're a little bit more experienced, I would go there because there's many other ways to do this. What we're going to do, uh, and I think the more you the more you learn, the better you are, the better off you are, especially when dealing with in programming. 
So let's uh, let's see what this looks like. It should obviously look familiar, but I haven't changed anything yet. I'm going to run it in Firefox. I'm going to share location. And so what, what renders is a jQuery mobile looking kind of screen, of course, because we've got the data roll page and all of that stuff. Very familiar. It's got the style of jQuery mobile that we're used to. A header bar at the bottom, no footer. Uh, and then here, here's the map that I was saying, the map placeholder that loaded up there. It is a real map that I can drag around. I can zoom in. I can even do street view. And we will be able to do this uh, also once we get to the point of making it into our app. It's going to be fully functional in the mobile <coughs> device. I'm going to see the map here. I'm going to be able to pinch or, or unpinch to zoom in, zoom out. I'll be able to do street view. It. It'll be a live map even on your device. So it's a map. Okay, we can do that pretty easily. But then where, where it uh, really has its use is get directions. Click get directions, and from your current location, point A, it'll give you a point B. And in my case, point B goes over to 4343 Ocean View Boulevard, San Diego, California. This is our other campus down in um, San Diego in National City area-ish. Not really National City, but down there uh, for, the other, for another campus of classes. Turn by turn directions is about five miles away, nine minutes. Till, it's not going to talk to you until you turn left here and slow down and all of that. Uh, but it'll give you turn-by-turn -turn directions, and it'll be even more accurate on your mobile device. In my case, it's giving me downtown San Diego, or it might be giving me the IP address of the whole San Diego um, Community College District, right, City College. So if this were running with full GPS capabilities, it would give me real directions. Well, these are real directions, but I mean accurate directions. Right, so how is this actually working? Uh, let's say I wanted it to, to end at a different location than this. I want it, let's say I get to the point that eventually I'm making my app for my fictional business, Victor's Bakery, and I want people to be able to visit the bakery. There's going to be a screen that says how to get to the bakery. I click it and it'll give them these types of directions. So. I want to change the ending destination. And that's what I said about keep in mind line 115. 115 has an input box to get your destination. We can change that, but let's do this. I'm curious. As I said, there's a bunch of hidden things here. I want to see what does it look like, what do they look like unhidden? We've got display none, which hides something. Let's change wherever we say display none, which is going to be on lines 114, 115, and 118. Let's change display none to say display block. So line 114, 115, 118. Display colon block. Save it and run it. Display block. So line eight, line uh, line eighteen, one hundred eighteen is anticlimactic. If I just put display block, it still doesn't display anything. It's just an empty div, nothing there. But the interesting things are line 114 and 115. Line 114 says that text, target destination. That was invisible previously. And then even more intriguing, there is a little input box there where we can put an address. Hmm. 
Okay, what about if we put, that's editable there, what if we put uh, an address, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, get directions. So I can put in any real address here, get directions, and it will give me the directions from point A to point B. So anyone want to take a 2,300 mile road trip over to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue? In one day, <laughs> one day, nine hours, non-stop. Non-stop, no sleep, no bathroom breaks. No, nothing. You don't even need gas. Let me see the bottom of that, please. Yes. Slight right onto Pennsylvania Avenue. No, that's not the right. It didn't get to the right location. Yeah, I went to yeah. Charleston, West Virginia. So apparently there's another 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in the world, in the U.S., not the White House. Um, so I didn't put the full address, but it went over to West Virginia. Question? Oh, I just have mine was saved. What's that? Mine was saved. It's asking if it's been opened by another program. This is saying uh, you open the file with the man and you copy it to the desktop there. Yeah, it says this one. No, but you want the one on the desktop, but it's on your phone. You need my network on the All right, so uh, here we've seen the ability to allow the user to input an address, a point B, and it'll make a map from point A to point B. Now, I don't exactly want this. I want that wherever a person is at and they click get directions on my app, it goes to my store. If they knew my directions to my store, why would they type the address in the app? Right? I want them to simply give me directions and it'll take you from wherever you are to my store. So what we've done here to reveal the input destination doesn't exactly solve our, our issue. If you want to customize this to go from your point A to your point B. Uh, so I'm just showing you here that there is a, a hidden, a couple of hidden items here that control a few things. I'm going to change these display block, these these displays back to none. I want to keep them hidden. I don't want people to have to put in the ending destination, but I want to set the ending destination. Uh, so display none. To all three of them. And you should see then that the default point B value is right there. Line 115. So if you are eventually going to make this for your app that actually takes you to your location, then you want your ending destination on value. I want the address for for this place because eventually uh, this app right is is our continuing education app and I want this address. I don't have it memorized so I'll go get it from the website. sdce.edu I'll pull this up and then you can you can copy it. So on line 115, we're going to change the, the value. Let me write it here, and then I'll show you.
Here it is. So if you change your value to this, this is our location here. That's what I want. Eventually when this app is done, I want someone that's uh, um, down in Chula Vista that wants to know how to get to this campus. They'll click the button, get directions, and it'll take them to this campus. 8355 Arrow Drive, San Diego, California, 92123. So change your value to that. So I'm going to save that, run it. And there we go. So from the starting point of A down to B, in this case 7.6 miles in about 11 minutes. All right, so this is how we set point B. How do we set point A? If the person's GPS doesn't work, there's a fail-safe here. Uh, what is a generic starting point? We'll look at that. But how is this? How is all of this magic happening? I'm giving you this, uh, this starting point, but now let's dissect it even more. What's actually happening? The, uh, the visual aspect the stuff in the body is not too much. It's 104 to 123. It's about 20 lines of code. But the actual way that it works, the JavaScript, that's the, that's the 90 lines. That was already there for us. Let's go back to the top and break it down what we've got. Line, uh, line 18. Line 18 starts uh, a little section of VAR. VAR, what's that again? variable. What's a variable? Container. Basically a container. So right here four variables are being created. Notice the shorthand that was being used. VAR, the name of a variable, comma, the name of another variable, comma, the name of another variable, comma. So you can create multiple variables at once with a comma. This is the same as if I was writing VAR map, semicolon, VAR current position, semicolon, VAR direction display, semicolon. Same thing, but this saves you a few bytes, keeps it all in one spot, and basically these four variables are created at once. Shorthand. So in some languages when you create a variable, you also have to define its type, meaning what can it hold. In a, in a certain language, I can create a variable that only can hold numbers. So if I try to put text into it, it won't work. I, I could get an error. I can create a variable that can only hold text, and if I put a number into it, it won't work. It's the wrong type. Text is a certain type. Numbers are a certain type. There's even like different types of numbers. JavaScript is a little more loose in that you don't have to define what type of variable it is, and it can hold uh, it can hold any any type of uh, element. Uh, so here we've defined something is a variable called map. It's going to hold a map. When you think of a map, maybe you think of coordinates or dimensions or directions or something. So here we're creating vari variables with different that can hold different types of things. Something called map, current position, directions display, directions service. Well, again, what I like about Notepad++ is if you double click or if you select something, it'll show you everywhere in the code where that's being used. I'm curious, where is map being used? Just select the word map, browse your code, you should see where the word map appears. Okay. 
specifically line 47. Line 47 is saying map equals. That equal symbol we saw it last week. Equals works differently in JavaScript, remember? Basically is take the thing on the right and put it into the thing on the left. So if we had a variable called cup, and then on the and we said cup equals water. We're putting water inside of cup. So here we're saying new google.maps.map document get element by id etc um, google dot maps remember when we were last week working on the gps we had navigator dot um, what was it navigator dot get location something like that we were saying um, let's access some features of the navigator geolocation uh, we also had um, a couple of something dot something that we were accessing features or aspects of, of something else. Here we're accessing something that Google is providing us. And that works because at the top we've got this reference to the Google JavaScript code. If we don't have line 15 where we have Google dot something, it won't, it won't work. It doesn't, doesn't mean anything. So basically we're creating a new map. We have a couple of parameters here, zoom of 15, center current position, map type id google dot maps dot map type id dot roadmap. Okay, well I would like to know what are the different uh, types here. You've, you've probably noticed that you can see a roadmap on, on Google, you can see a, a satellite map, there's other types of maps. So um, we would look up the, the Google Maps documentation, and it would tell us what are the different types of maps that we can show. Map type ID. I don't have them memorized. Road map is the one we're currently using. There might be aerial map or satellite map. We can change that, and it changes our type of map. Zoom. There's different levels of zoom. Zooming in, zooming out, when we, when we load the map originally, we've got 15, we can increase or decrease the values and see what happens. Or we can look up the documentation, what do the higher numbers or the lower numbers mean. And then uh, center. Where are we going to center the map? With our current position. So if we select current position, that shows us up here that current position is defined by a new Google map with a latitude and longitude coordinate. And that comes back from this function of initialize. So this is why I'm saying I'm going to give you this, this starting point, this template, because this is pretty complicated to, to get to work. We, we've got some knowledge in JavaScript. We've, got, we've learned about, uh, in basic, in detail, we've learned about um, creating functions, creating variables, doing a few basic things, but for it to fully work, we need to then become experts in using Google Maps code. So that's why I'm giving you this that already works. We're just breaking it down for it to work how we want. So let me back up to the top. Again, if we were to select each of these variables and look through our code about how it actually is used, we can, we can do that, but let's, let's go through this direction. If we start at the top, line 23, we've got something here that says that we haven't seen before, dollar document. This is jQuery. This is referencing the whole document. And then we're referencing a, an event live. We're saying when the document is live, when we're accessing the document, page before show, run this function, navigator, geolocation, get current position. That's the one we looked at last time. We wrote that previously. We, we had a button that when we clicked it, it did this. 
navigator, geolocation, get current position. So that's familiar, but notice it's happening basically as soon as the document becomes live, as soon as we load the document, basically. As soon as we load the document, ask for the directions. And do you notice that's exactly what happens when you run it? Right away at the top it asks you, can we have your directions? So at the very beginning it asks, can we get your GPS coordinates? And we saw previously, well, if we have a, if we have a successful result or an unsuccessful result, deal with that as functions. This was the question previously. Why don't we write, if this is a function, why aren't we writing open close parentheses there? Unfortunately, that's the way it is. That's the way this was designed. Um, that it expects whatever we put here should be a function. Loc success. So if I look for loc success, here it is here. Define the function loc success. So it's getting the it's getting the the data that we pulled from GPS, and it's putting it into location success here, the GPS position data. We're running a function initialize with a latitude and longitude. When we did our alert for our our simple GPS test last time, we did something similar. We showed position dot latitude and position.cords.longitude. We showed that on screen. Here we're using it further with initialize. And initialize is defined here. It takes us back to the part where we display that map. Notice we've also got loc error. If there's an error right here trying to get the geolocation, then run the function loc error. And there's a comment here. Initialize map with a static predefined latitude longitude. This is where we can set it that if GPS is not working, at least show some starting point A. And uh, that should be downtown San Diego. So if I wanted to change that, I would need to put in some latitude and longitude coordinates. Uh, I'm just going to play with this for a moment and change something else. This is, uh, this is north, and then this is west. So I'm going to say uh, 100. Okay, it's still showing me downtown, and that most likely has to do with that it is getting our IP address maybe from San Diego City College, because our internet connection is all coming from, from that main location, apparently. But if I were to be able to fully test it on a mobile device and my GPS failed, this is what the predefined location error should be at. Question? Is it the same if you deny it? Access to your location? Hmm, maybe. Let me do that. I'm going to close this out. Because when we were looking at uh, W3 schools, there were actually a few uh, there were actually a few possibilities of, of results here. That the GPS fails, that we denied it, um, a couple of other ones. Doesn't seem to work, but I know that as we go on and we get to the point where we make it an actual app, it does work completely uh, when it is on an actual device. So I can't fully test this, but you'll just have to trust me. I'm, I'm your teacher. I know what I'm doing, usually. Um, so this is our predefined coordinates. 
if you would want to set it at some other location, you would need to use something like uh, Google Maps or do a, a search. What are the GP? What are the latitude longitude coordinates of X? Right. If you wanted it to start from Sacramento, S Sacramento City Hall, let's say, I would need to find that address and then get its latitude and longitude. Question. Is there a, a function like right now we use to get current position that gives latitude and longitude? Is there a function that says get current address? Address? No. Uh, from uh, from what our capabilities are using HTML5, there is there there is no get current address. Uh, it's about getting the the raw data of your of your GPS sensor get current position. So it'll give you latitude and longitude, but not Google an address. Has a way to, you can get Google address mm -hmm. and they can convert it to lat long. It could, and vice versa. So you know we we feed it here. At the bottom, we feed it a, a human readable address, and it could be converting it also to latitude and longitude. Uh, so I don't believe, but we can we can look it up. I don't believe there's a get, you know, get address. This is a this is an h. We're, we're using some HTML5, um, uh, an HTML5 a, uh, API that has been defined to get latitude and longitude. <coughs> Is line 23, is that a function call? Um, yes and no. Uh, here, the very first thing we see is, uh, is jQuery. This is jQuery waiting for an event to happen. Um, there's various events that we can tap into, like let's say clicking a button, refreshing the page, uh, a countdown timer running out, so there's events. We're waiting for an event here. This is page before show. Once that happens, then we run a function right here, an anonymous function, um, which is then getting the uh, getting the GPS. So the very first part of it is not quite a function, but then the result of it is to run an anonymous function. Yes. On that same one, I noticed that there's an ID for map page, but I don't find that to be used in the rest of the document. I, I didn't find it either, and um, I didn't test it to see what would happen if, I, if we removed it, because, yeah, we don't see anything here. There, this might have been from the person's original answer, that it was adapted from some other answer, and then it was remnant code. Uh, so I don't know what that is actually trying to do there. Maybe it's an appendix that it was just a remnant. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if it was trying to refer to some object and then uh, make sure that, that object was there and that's where the live uh, method was set. Most likely because it is defined as an ID so I would assume that there is something that we that we're referencing on the screen or maybe uh, maybe uh, this is something that the uh, Google Maps API expects. If we look up their documentation, it might say, make sure you have this in case you want to do that. I don't know, so a good eye there. That's not defined anywhere in our document. It might be dynamic, though. It might be that after we get coordinates, a map page gets created. So, line 23 is some sort of event handler? Yes, basically. It's an event handler, yes. Very similar to what we see here at 27. Document on click. We're waiting for the event of click. Handle that event. So this event, page before show. So that takes us to line 27. This is um, this is what is known as an event handler, where some sort of event happens. As I was saying, the page might load, a button might be clicked, a timer might run out, some sort of event. On this one, we've said somewhere in our document. If we click on something, do the following. The something in this case is something called directions button here. Uh, so in the document, when something happens on this event, the event of a click on this thing here, do the following. Well, I'm curious, what is that thing, directions button? If you scroll down, Here, directions button, line one seventeen. That's that button that we that is there waiting for us. That's that button that doesn't have 
a link anywhere. It's just acting like a link. It's an active link. It has this ID. That's what that app, that's what event handler is waiting for. Once you click this button, do the rest. Question. On, on that tag, the, the anchor tag with direction button, mm -hmm. couldn't we put an on click equals there and then reference yes. the function? Yes. Um, would, that be, would that be subtly different than? It will be. It, it will be subtly different. Um, functionally, I don't think there'll be a difference. Uh, but yeah, uh, that that's a that's what we did last time, right? Remember, we had a button that said "on click run this function." We could definitely do that. Depending on 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 other factors, you may get a different result or not. Because I know when we get to the part about talking about uh, saving stuff in a database, it'll limit us if we try to do on click compared to this method here, this event handler method, right here. So in our case, it might not functionally be different, but there is a difference of what, what is happening. So this is sort of like uh, if we had defined this as a function, function get map, then we could have had on click equals get map, because this stuff here would 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 still be called. Question. What's the, the syntax of that? Like we have the what goes in between like comments? Like when we did um, uh, the CSS with the box shadow, there was the this is X and this is Y and this is blur or whatever, and then that was the color. Yes, For this one um, basically from the example that we have here, and then we can look. In the documentation, the syntax is you're going to be referencing the document dot some sort of event uh, handler. We've got dot live, we've got dot on, we've got dot on click, we've got uh, dot on up, or other ones. So we've got different uh, types of events that happen. Which specific one? In this case, click. We could wait for a double click. We could wait for a click and drag. So. Then there's the first comma. What type of uh, event to work with? Uh, secondly, second comma. What what thing are we waiting for to trigger this event? So this is the event. This is the trigger. And then what's comma? What's the result of the trigger? In this case, what they've done is then they fit in a function. They could have called this, um, you know, get map. And later on here, created function, get map, and put this stuff in there. But here they're trying to save a little bit of, of, of effort. Kind of what we've got up here. We've got one var, do this, comma, do this, comma, do that, comma. Here they put in the function right at the end here, where it could have just been the name of the function and then define the function elsewhere. So the syntax is you're referencing the document, what particular, and it has a specific name. I'm blanking on um, event handler there, which specific one, what's the trigger, what's the result, which is what you're seeing on top here as well, document, uh, on live, page before show, something is there, and then a function, yes? I think it has different names, but I usually have heard it as an anonymous function. I think uh, it might be called a dummy function. Anyone heard it, of it like that? I usually hear it as an, as an anonymous function. OK, so the point of that is that when the button is clicked, run these two other commands, so the two functions, e.preventDefault. And this e is data coming in from this function here, whatever whatever was pulled from clicking the button, prevent default. What's prevent default? Um, I don't see prevent default defined within this code, but it could be that prevent default <coughs> comes from the, the, the Google Maps JavaScript that we don't have access to. Calculate route is found right here. So we've got a button, we click on it, 
It runs the calculate route function. Here it is defined, several lines long. Var target destination equals. We've got this again, this dollar sign. That's basically shorthand. Previously, we did something like this document get element by ID, and then within the parentheses there, target dest. This can be shortened down to this via jQuery. So, this that I've got highlighted is the plain JavaScript. And then jQuery is around for you to be able to accomplish these tasks with less coding. So with less coding you might have less errors and you get other functionality. So this thing gets shortened down to that dollar sign and then the, the ID within the quotes within the parentheses. And then that says dot val. Target dest, that's an ID, which is found right here. Target dest. ID target dest. Value. So it's basically grabbing the value that's in that invisible box. Remember when we made it visible, we typed in a value, we pressed get directions. Well, what was happening was it was taking what was the value inside of that box and putting it in, into the variable at the top here. Target destination. So there's a section, line 71 to 96, that starts with if. We didn't get, uh, we didn't get to this previously. Uh, if is a way for JavaScript to make decisions. So think about this in, in the real world. If I say, okay, I'm hungry. So I could think about it this way. If I'm hungry, I can go get something to eat. Or else I'm not hungry so I won't get anything to eat. I made a decision, a positive, a negative decision, a yes, no decision. Basically, I'm asking, are you hungry? Yes, go eat, or else you're not hungry, so don't eat. And that's what we're seeing here, if. In JavaScript, in many languages, we have if to, to ask a question, and if something is true, do the following, or if it's false do the following, or if we fail to be truthful. Uh, so we've got a section up here where it's going to ask a couple of questions. Current position, and then we've got this double and symbol, which means and. You know, we, we can't write the word and. We want to say, if I'm hungry and I have money, go, go get something to eat. So both of those need to be true before I can go get something to eat. I'm hungry, but I don't have money can't eat. So here, something like that is happening. If this and this is true, do the following, or else do the following. So what do we have? Current position and current position is not empty. So this right here means not. Not equals. This one is and, this one not, um, specifically not, not equals, or not is empty. See these two, these two um, apostrophes, that means empty. So we're saying uh, current position and current position is not empty and target destination. If you try to use what? C sharp. No, no, before that. 
is oh, HTML like what? I said, did you allow to do that with HTML and you put in random words and it'll go right over? Because if you try to do that with Steve Jobs, it'll break like a house of cards. But random words in what way? You just put in not and. Oh, I'm putting it in there, but I'm not saying write it. Oh, okay. I'm just uh, translating that uh, that is it means and, yeah. but I'm not putting it in. I'm just saying that that's what it means in in JavaScript. So here it's trying to uh, check if something is true. It's trying to check uh, about our current position. Make sure it's not empty. Is there a target destination? So in short, is it saying is there a target? Is there a starting destination? And is there an ending destination? If there is, then eventually all of this code says display the map. Display a, a map. And then show the results. Remember, there's a div down at the bottom that is invisible. Display none. And um, if we do have a starting point, point A, point B, then show the results, or else don't show the results. Hide it. So then, in, in the totality of it, is that this is what it accomplishes. It gives you directions from point A to point B. And you see that it works uh, flawlessly with the press of a button, but look at all that's happening behind the scenes, about 90 lines of code, taking your GPS coordinates, dealing with it, tapping into Google Maps, showing the results. So if that all still seems pretty confusing, uh, that's okay. As long as you know what to change to make it fit your needs, you don't need to know every aspect of code. Um, you can have these starting points, these, these templates, and begin working with them, know enough about it to work with the code and then change it as how you want. Question? Yeah, I'm, I'm stuck on the, on the if statement where it says if current position and current position. Why do you have to repeat? Why isn't it just why is it if current position is empty? And I, would, um, I would actually put it like this, maybe for a little more readability. I would put it... Maybe like that. Oh, maybe not necessary. Maybe right here. What this is saying is all of these things have to be true. Like I said, okay, if I'm hungry and I have money and I have a car and I have this and I have that, if I have all of those things, then I'm able to go get food. So think about it more like this, where it's saying, okay, do we have a current position, and the current position is not empty? Um, because current position is defined over here somewhere. Current position. Current position is defined by creating a new Google Map Latitude and Longitude um, method. And that comes from getting the latitude and longitude of the GPS. Right, it comes back from over here, initialize, which comes back from over here, get the coordinates, which comes back from over here. So you see somewhere along the line there could be a failure. That we, we ran the function, we tried to get the GPS coordinates, and there's an object, but the object is not holding any actual coordinates. So our if is just trying to cover all of the bases about is are there actually point A and point B. So we can probably get very similar results if we do remove this part, although that's we, we have less error checking here. We can also remove this other one here. This is saying, yeah, we might have coordinates, 
are the empty coordinates. That's what, what I just removed. This is basically saying, do now we have any? Yeah, same thing, probably. Uh, we're just being um, very cautious to make sure that the data that we're getting is good data. I mean, if, if you didn't have a current position, then the, the current position would be empty. That would be, I mean, that, that would apply even if you didn't have a current position. That makes sense. Um, again, this came from a tutorial that I that I found that it that it accomplished what I wanted to accomplish and yeah this is the thing let's take it out let's see what happens most likely it'll work um, it might be overkill the way they did it but sometimes it's better to overthink especially with errors than to underthink and then it doesn't work so it seemed to have worked question. I think the issue here is how, how to check it for the current position of the zip. Because like, JavaScript loads all at once, and sometimes it doesn't define the variable before it tries to run that function. So it's kind of that makes sense also that you can have an, a condition where the variable itself doesn't even exist before something else needs to use it. So I guess here it's just simply checking for the existence. Here we're checking does that variable exist? But then this one actually checks does the variable have data inside of it? Yeah. Could. You get weird error messages though if the variable doesn't exist, get variable undefined and it gets messy. Oh. Yeah. You could get undefined, you could get not a number, you could get a bunch of a bunch of weird results. So here it's checking everything. everything. Does it even yeah. exist? Does it have something inside of it? Hmm. Yeah, if it doesn't exist, the second part. The, the not equals? Right. And, yeah, because those things get processed left to right. And I would almost put the one that says target destination, you know, in, in the second position, and then the, the two comparisons against the end of strings as the third and fourth position. Because hmm. then you're hitting them early and then it fails. It just might be. I guess they put it like that just aesthetically. But yeah, put it over here. So if we process it left to right, then we check here right away, do these things even exist? And then we check, are they empty? So um, did that answer your question then, Delta? Yes, question. So what if you need the map to be a map? at your location, and then you didn't want it to actually get their location until they click the button. A map at your location? You well, mean at the location, like, let's say I want to see, okay, where is the school? And I I click on the map screen, I'm just going to see where the school is. I don't want to see where I am. I want to see oh, where okay. it is. Sort of like this, that as soon as I, as soon as I visit this page, there's already a map well, um, what we could do is notice the the map is displayed after we have an ending location. So this is perhaps overkill to show that. Here's one way you could do it, uh, maybe even the simplest way of all. Over on um, without in, without even any programming, over at um, Kodika. Dot com, there was a little widget there that allows you to display a map, um, a predefined map. So that's one way where we tell it here. Here's our starting location. So we've got a map right here. I mean, do this on an empty page. Okay, and then I'm going to tell it. Um, these coordinates or the, this address it 
So it's not going to be a dynamic map, but this uh, could be enough to show the the starting point of the map. Uh, so do you see that concept that I could I could use this simple little map here that displays the the starting point um, before and then if someone wants the directions they click get directions and they'll get the interactive map um, notice what happens right away is when the page loads up the example page as soon as the as soon as the page loads up it's asking for the directions it's it's asking for your location so nothing displays until you until you share location so if you wanted it to first show you have to do you have to put more effort into it which I'd have to kind of do a little bit of research exactly how to do that but uh, that could be one way uh, you can use the Kodika you know this simple Kodika pre-made map and then dynamically when when someone clicks the um, the get directions it hides that div and then displays the real map all right so we're going to take a break in a moment um, we've got this uh, this map where we're understanding more how it works we're going to see how can we integrate it into our site because right now it exists as its own uh, separate file so we're going to then um, connect our existing site to it and then deal with um, with history of going back and forth and such because something will come up so it's about 7 30 let's take a 10 minute break we're back at 7 40 and we'll go on <laughs>